Hey, Siemi, Siemi family, um, Salama. And if there is anyone on the continent that may speak in Congo, uh, one of the Bantu language groups, Betuabu, Banabetu, I greet you all in the name of our Most High. Some will call him Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh. Um, but in the name of our Most High, so Nini Nanini, in Zambi Yamazulu, he has many names. Um, my name is, I go by the name of Baya, Baya. Um, that's the name that was given to me by my mother uh, when I was a, a child. And, you know, being from Jamaica, every Jamaican um, has a little pet name, and Baya was mine. By way of um, brief uh, bio of myself, um, I worked for a large metropolitan fire, fire, fire department for 25 years. The last 10 of those years, um, I was a paramedic instructor, EMS captain in the emergency services uh, division. Um, I was responsible for recertifying all of our personnel that was within a given group, um, maintaining their CEUs, re reviewing rescue reports. I also taught at a major university in their uh, medical training division, uh, helping to recertify physicians and nurses and paramedics, EMTs. Um, teaching is a passion of mine. And, um, you know, when I came into this truth in August of 2018, um, after a couple of months of doing research, I was ready to jump into the fray. And I started the YouTube channel and did a couple of videos. And, um, you know, the most high had to shut me down <clears throat> because, you know, even though I had zeal, um, the knowledge that I had acquired in Christianity uh, wasn't what he wanted me to go by. I was jumping in it based on my own intellect and my own ability. And so, he kind of set me down to the side and, you know, so I started path of researching, you know, I um, watched tons of videos, read numerous articles, ordered books, going back and forth between the Bible, rereading many of the chapters in the Bible, reading the books. And so just trying to educate myself. The scripture says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so that's what I did. Um, you know, I've been learning and, you know, recently in the past month or so, I've just had this kind of feeling of malaise, you know, like, you know, that little hamster in that wheel that's running and feeling like he's going nowhere. And so I said to the most high, you know, why am I feeling this way? You know, and, you know, I used to take pleasure into, <clears throat> you know, watching videos and just doing research. I love doing research. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but, you know, I just kind of felt like I'm in malaise and I was asking him, I'm like, what is your purpose for my life? You know, it's like, I didn't have the same, it's like when you have a, some food that you, you love the food and you eat and eat and eat and eat. And all of a sudden it's like, you you lose taste for that food. Well, that was what was kind of happening to me. You can only, you know, hear Deuteronomy 28 so many times you can only hear Ezekiel 37 and Genesis 15. And we all know the scriptures that we've come to be familiar with as a part of this awakening. And so um, what I heard in my spirit, it's time for you to get off the sidelines. It's time for you to get off the sidelines, you know? And so, um, you know, I was saying, okay, well, Father, whatever you want me to do, I'm, I'm here to do. In fact, my prayers, many of my prayers is, Father, use my voice, use my intellect. Whatever gifts you place within me, let these gifts surface so that I can be of use to you, that I may be a vessel for you, and that I may be a blessing unto your people. And so, you know, he was speaking to me, even according to what I asked him for. He said, it's time for you to get off the sidelines. And so um, he gave me a message um, that I wanted to share. I don't know who it's for. I don't know how far it would go, but I'm just being obedient uh, to his will. Uh, 
so uh, I'm going to jump into it, but the title of this, you know, sometimes I hate calling things message because I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to teach down to you or whatever, but it's just sharing what the most high is uh, placed in my heart. My sheep hears my voice when a whisper becomes a shout. I used to run a recording studio. Um, both my sons are musicians and um, I myself uh, play the guitar. Not great at it, but I do okay. Um, and, you know, through trying to help them, I started buying equipment and just developed from there and ended up, you know, having a sound production company and a recording studio. Worked with a couple of artists, didn't really get anywhere, you know, um, you know, this industry, uh, for those who've tried it, you all know it's very controlled. And so we didn't get very far, but it got me familiar with sound. And in fact, my son, he now owns a lighting company. Um, so sound and light is something that we're both familiar with. Within the human auditory range, there is limits. Uh, working for the fire department, we used to get annual physicals, and some of you may have experienced this if you've had any issue with your hearing. But to test your hearing, um, to see if there's any hearing loss, uh, as a part of our annual physicals, we would uh, go we'll go into a sound booth, a, 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 a booth that's insulated, and they would put headphones on you and give you a little clicker, and they would start playing different tones in each ear and you know different frequencies low and high frequencies and whenever you heard the sound at different levels you would click the little button and that's how they can get a range of what your hearing is and whether you're sustaining any hearing loss and so um there are animals that can hear things that we can't that's why a dog whistle if you blow it it's silent to you but an animal can hear it because they have a greater auditory range just like sense of smell you know um you, there's a range for, for, for those so animals can hear uh, greater, have better auditory ranges than us. And the same thing applies with light. Um, the same thing applies, my computer's a little slow, so forgive me. Uh, the same thing applies with light, um, is that there is also a, 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 a frequency range of light where uh, um, a spectrum, it should, it's called of light. Huh, looks like I'm missing uh, one of my slides. Anyway, I had light in there, but light has a spectrum. Um, where you can see within the spectral range, but there's certain types of lights that's invisible to your, your eyes, like X-ray and UV light and so on. And radio and television signals, um, those of you who are older, like myself, may remember the days of the rabbit ear antenna. And you would have that big dial that you'd have to tune in the, the channel, and then you'll have a small dial that you know, you kind of fine tune it, you know, the same thing um, on some radios, the AM by band, you'd have to turn the dial to try to tune it in. And my point about radio and television signal is that it's all around us all the time. But in order to interpret or interpolate the signal, you would have to have the right equipment tuned into the right frequency, the right equipment tuned into the right frequency. And so, um, that has the same, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual, that there is sounds and vibrations that is beyond the spectrum of the human ear and the visual uh, spectrum, that if you are not in tune, you will not be able to interpret the message, the signal that is being sent out that is everywhere. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. I wanted to go back to the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. And um, in Genesis 3 and 8, it says, and they heard the voice of Yah walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Um, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yah amongst the trees of the garden. Excuse me. And, and Yah um, called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Where art thou? Um, there's certain times that scriptures puzzle me. I scratch my head. Um, we, uh, the reason why I have H7307 up there is the strong concordance number H7307, which is Ruach. And the funny thing, I've been using Strong's for quite some time, even before I came into this awakening, but I never even really knew who Strong was. It was just Strong's concordance. So being the person that I am, you know, if I'm going to quote somebody, I want to know who this person is. 
So I Googled Strong, James Strong is his name, and you can Google him if you're, you're interested in finding out, well, what is his credentials? What is his qualifications for what he gave us? Did he speak the Greek language? Did he speak the Hebrew language? And even if he spoke it, does, is he familiar with all the nuances of the language? Because those of you who understand language, you know, even me being from Jamaica, I was teasing my wife. I said, you know, when you talk to our people, you know, there are places that, um, like for instance, uh, I'll give you an example. In Jamaica, there's a place called Savannah Lamar. But the native, no native person would call it Savannah Lamar. They call it Sav Lamar, Sav Lamar. And so my point is, if you don't understand the nuances of a language, then how would you know that you're using the right word? Can you just sit down with a dictionary of English and Greek words and compare them And if you don't really understand the language? And so we take a lot of these things as gospel. Um, we quote these people and we think that they are the, uh, the authority on the word. And so many times they are in error, but because we think they're in authority, we don't, we don't see the error. We just take what they say at face value. So in this particular passage, it talks about the most high and the way we've been taught in church. He came down in the cool of the day, was physically walking through the garden. And because Adam and Eve was hiding, and he's there calling, hey, Adam, Eve, where are you? Adam, Eve, where are you? Well, that always puzzled me. So I went back and I did a word study. And, and what I found in the interline interlinear is that the word in the cool or the phrase in the cool was H7307 or Ruach. And Ruach was used only one time in the Bible as cool, one time. But spirit or spirit was used over 232 times. So I asked myself, well, why did he choose to use cool? See, when man tries to use his intellect to interpret what the spirit is saying, whether by accident or deliberately, it changes what the passage may or may not be conveying. If you took and said, okay, let me, let me come back to that. I, I, I want to uh, talk about something. Deductive reasoning is also deductive logic. It's the process of reasoning from one or more statement or premise to reach a logical conclusion, right? Where art thou was the question that the Most High asked him. Let me read Genesis 4, verse 9. And, and Yah said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So did the blood just start to cry out then? Or has it been crying out from the time that it was spilled? So when the most I asked, asked, asked Abel, where is thy brother? Is it because he didn't know where he was? Because he, the very next statement he made after Cain and his arrogant self said, you know, what? I'm, I don't know where he is. Am I my brother's keeper? He said, what have you done? Your brother's blood is crying out to me. So he already knew what he had done. Psalms 139, verse 7 through 12. This is Dawidi or David speaking. It says, whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be as the light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike with thee. So let's go back to this um, episode with Adam in the garden. If Dawidi is acknowledging that I can't hide from his presence, where am I going to go to hide? If I go to the furthest part of the earth, he's there. If I go to the deepest part of hell, he's there. If I try to cover myself in darkness, the darkness and the light is all the same. So how can I hide from him? But not only that, you know, we often say that the most high, he's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He has all power. So then how would he not know where Adam was? Did he just shut his power off or does he, his power come on and off? So then if he know if he knew where Adam was, then, then it, it, it begs the question, then why is he asking, where are you? Here's my take on it. That when the most high created Adam, that he made him perfect. And so there was a link in the spirit between the most high and Adam. 
as it is in heaven, so it is on the earth. It was a direct link. But when Adam broke the commandment that it separated him, sin separates us from the Most High. And so when the Most High was asking Adam, where art thou? He wasn't asking, where's your location? He's saying, where are you spiritually? I no longer feel the connection that we once had. Where are you spiritually? Now, people may say I'm wrong and that's fine. You know, we, uh, we all can interpret it how we feel, but I'm just putting out something to think about because that gives a different meaning when you think of what was he asking Adam? What was, what was he asking Cain? Where's your brother? Was it because he didn't know? Or he's saying, what did you do to your brother? So anyway, um, the Most High speaks a uh, still small voice. First King, verse 19, verse 9. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of Yah came unto him. And he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for, uh, for Yah of hosts, for the children of Isole lay Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altar, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before Yah, and behold, Yah passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it, break in pieces the rocks before Yah. But the but Yah was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but Yah was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but Yah was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Um, it's a peculiar uh, scripture because the prior, the previous verse, which uh, a chapter, told the story of this showdown that Elijah had with the prophets of Baal. It's a well-known story that he said, whoever answers by fire, as the previous scripture, and uh, let me read it in, in 1 Kings 18, 24, and, and, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of Yah. And the Elohim that, fight, that answers by fire, let him be Elohim. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. So he's saying, okay, whoever answers by fire, let him be the true Elohim. And so he, he allowed the 400 and 50 or 400, I think it was, uh, by Baal's prophets to go first. And he's like, cry unto your gods. And they cried unto their gods from, I think, from sun up to sundown. And Elijah at one point started mocking them. Maybe he's deaf. Cry a little louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And so after he got, they got through cutting themselves up and, all, you know, sadomasochism, you know, cutting themselves up. And after, um, he's like, okay, all right, y'all stand out of the way. Let the big boys move in. <laughs> and Elijah prayed unto the Yah of heaven. Boom, fire came down and consumed uh, the sacrifice and all those things. We know the story. So here is two different situations. One where the Most High did respond by fire. And here he responded in a still small voice. See, you can't put the Most High in a box. Why the still small voice? Um, the subtitle to the message is when a whisper becomes a shout. Sometimes when somebody is shouting, you don't have to do anything because it's so loud, you can hear it. But when somebody is whispering, you have to lean in to hear what they're saying. You have to lean in. And sometimes a whisper can be used for effect. And so sometimes the most high is trying to get our attention. And I tell people <laughs> that I hear voices all the time and I ain't cray cray. I'm not crazy. But I'm sure you all have gone through this experience. You could be just sitting, just, you know, just chilling or even in prayer, praising the most high. And all of a sudden, here comes this thought out of nowhere. You hear a voice that will make, will say the craziest thing, sometimes the most perverted thing. And you say, where in the heck did that come from? Right? Because we have voices all around us that's constantly speaking. And we have to learn to filter out these voices. We have the voice of our own conscience, our own intellect, our own thoughts. We have the voice of, 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 of satanic forces as they whisper in our ears. And then we have the voice of the Mwandan Semi as he speaks. Now, I'm a big Marvel comic book, you know, I'm, even though I'm 62, I don't mind saying my age. I think I look good for 62. But um, I love watching 
shows like, you know, Superman, Aquaman, and all those back in the days. And in the recent Superman episode, um, where the young uh, Clark Kent, um, his powers just started to develop and he's in his classroom. And all of a sudden now he's starting to see people through like X-ray vision eyes and, you know, he's seeing their skeletal remains and then he starts hearing their their voices. And, and you know, was also confused that it, it, it just, you know, it, it just frightened him and he ran into the closet and they had to call his mother. And those of you who watched the movie will know what I'm talking about. But later on, um, as he's grown now and, um, and and his uh these people the rest of his people that came to the planet um god i can't think of the name of um the person he was fighting um but some of you already some of you who may know who he is i, I forget his name but he was like the leader military person and so when he came to the earth's environment because of the yellow sun he started developing those same abilities but because superman clark kent had been here all his life he learned and, and so when 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 this person starts hearing these things it's like ah you know because it was hurting him and so superman said oh it hurts huh yeah so i've trained myself to filter out all of this you know focus on and so what he was saying is that you have to learn to filter out all the noise and focus on that still small voice so the power of his voice this is a uh uh when job and his friends were debating but some of his friends were saying to them in job 37 2 uh, said hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth <clears throat> excuse me he directed it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth after it a voice roareth he thundereth with the voice of his excellency and he will not stay them when his voice is heard yah thundereth marvelously with his voice great things doeth he which which we cannot comprehend then um uh, I'll, I'll stop there but these are the friends description of the voice of the most high and how it how it can be heard um you hear terms such as roareth thundereth right marvelously right in verse 38 in chap on chapter 38 verse 1 it says then yah answered job out of a whirlwind if you ever hear people who talk about when they when a tornado is coming they said it sounds like a freight train that's the description that i hear all the time it sounds like a freight train um it says who is that who is that this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge um revelation 14 2 said and i heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and i heard the voice of harpers harping and um, with their harps so in this scenario the voice of the most high is described in terms such as thundereth and loud and 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 and, and roareth and you know uh, the sound of many waters if you've ever heard the water the, the 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 waves crashing up against the beach or you've been there a waterfall and you the niagara fall i've been there and you hear the sound of the water it's 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 a loud sound so the most high can speak in either whispers or he can speak in in, in shouts um his sheep john 10 1 says Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the, sheep, into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. Um, and so uh, there's a lot to garner from this, but you know, I wanna keep on point because I'm talking about hearing the voice of the Most High. Um, he says that his sheep will hear his voice uh, for they know his voice, um, the voice of a stranger, they will not follow because uh, they don't know the voice of the stranger. So the question becomes then, if you are his sheep, are you hearing his voice? are you hearing his voice because if you are not hearing his voice then you are hearing the voice of a stranger and following after a stranger okay um Yesiah, or whom the world calls jesus hebrews 1 11 says yah who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his persons and upholding all things by the word of his power. <laughs> um, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And Isaiah or Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Um, let me pause there for a minute. Uh, there was a time when one of the disciples, I believe it might have been Thomas, said unto him, the Isaiah, show us the Father and it will suffice us. And he's like, dude, don't you get it? When you see me, you've seen the Father. For whatever I do is what the Father bids me to do. So I am a reflection. I actually don't use the term, like the term reflection, but I, that's one other time. But I, I emanate who he is, his brightness, his glory, what he is, I am. And so um, when you understand the godness that was in him and the godness that is in you, it takes you to a different level. Um, that leads me to another question. Um, Acts, uh, let me, Luke, Luke, Luke 24, 49 says, and behold, I send the promise of my father unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. Um, I ask this question, where is that power today? Where is the manifestation of the power? Isaiah himself said, the works that I do shall you do also, but greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. See, I, I was, we were walking, my wife and I, we tend to walk uh, about three miles several times a week. And so during our walk, we do a lot of talking and you know, I said, you know, I see this, the timeline of man as a relay race, that the most high started the race and handed the baton to Isaiah. And then Isaiah, even though his ministry was only 33 years, excuse me, he fulfilled his purpose and handed the baton to the Mwanda and Sammy, whom we call the Holy Spirit. And um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but in one of the other slides, um, I talk more about the Holy Spirit. But you know, this is, he said, in sundry times and in, in, in previous times and in, in different times and in different ways, he spake unto our forefathers by the prophets. How did he speak? Did he speak to them audibly? We're going to get into all of that um, or through the spirit. But he said in these days, in these last days, he's speaking to us by his son. He's speaking to us by his son. But in the churches, where is the power? Where is it? In our personal lives. And I'm speaking to me too, because, you know, I truly believe that we should be exhibiting the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So there is a disconnect there. I often say to people, how can we be connected to the most power? And I, I can't even say that the world has ever known because no one fully understands his power. But how can we be connected to one so powerful and then be so powerless? there's a disconnect somewhere. And this is what we have to figure out is where that disconnect is. Because we should be doing the things that not only Isaiah did, but greater things than these shall, shall we be doing. Are we seeing that today? Anyway, I wanna keep it moving because I, 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 I'm i gonna try not to be too long. Uh, he speaks through his word, through the scriptures, right? You notice I didn't say through the Bible, I said through the scriptures, and I'm gonna get into that um, in a second. John 1, 1 is a very a scripture we quote all the time. I've preached the message on John 1, 1. Many pastors have preached the message on John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything that made that was made. Uh, in him was life and the life was a light of men and light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not. The Bible said in the beginning was the Bible. 
No, he said in the beginning was the word, the word. Uh, the Bible itself, oftentimes we use them synonymously, the Bible and the word or the Bible and the scriptures, which is an error. And I'm going to show you why. Um, but the Bible said that the word was there at the beginning. Before man established the written language, how did he speak to them? Because if we're to understand how things were, how things are today, we should understand how things were in the past. So we didn't have the written word back then, but the Most High still spoke, didn't he? So anyway, um, Psalms 119 verse 11 said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How can hiding the word in your heart keep you from sinning against him? Because the word speaks. When you're about to do something, you hear that little voice and you feel that little uncomfortable nagging feeling inside is like, no, don't do that. You know, you know, you shouldn't commit adultery because the word says don't commit adultery, don't commit fornication, whatever. It is the word that is embedded in your heart that speaks to you and convicts you. Yeah, we know the Holy Spirit also convicts you, but you're convicted also by the word that is inside of you. <clears throat> and, um, you know, um, we often quote John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, we know the scripture. But when you read beyond 16, it says, for light came into the, this is the condemnation that light came into the world and the men, men rejected the light because their deeds were evil. And so they preferred the darkness rather than the light. And this is a part of the problem that people are choosing darkness. Why? Because darkness, they think, uh, is hides what it is that they're doing. But they, they need to remember that the light and the dark is the same with the most high and you cannot hide from him. Um, there is um, John 21 and 25 says, and there also, um, there are also many other things which Messiah did, Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain <clears throat> the books that should be written. Amen. Um, so what it's saying is that if all the things that Messiah did was documented, that there wouldn't be enough books and the world could not hold the amount of books that, that could contain all the things that he did. So I asked this question, if the world could not contain the works that Yesiah did, how do we think that 66 books could contain the essence of the Most High? Um, I had a brother uh, one time um, say this, uh, Jonathan Chilombo, and I, I'm, I give credit to people because, you know, I know that, I mean, I always agree with everything that people say, and I'm not saying whether I agree or disagree with Jonathan, but I'm telling you that he's, uh, he's who I heard this from, but he made a statement and I've learned a lot of things from him and from others too. And I'll give people credit to, throughout the course of this, this, this lesson or this thought that I'm sharing. Um, but he said something that made me pause for a second and I had to think about that. He said, the Bible is not the word of Yah, but the Bible contains the word of Yah. And in my Christian mind, I'm there trying to process that. What do you mean the Bible is not the word of God, but it contains the word of God? But this, this is where revelation comes in. You see, you cannot contain the most high within 66 books. The very Bible that we read today has books taken out of it. They had the apocryphal books that was a part of the Bible, you know, up prior to 1611, I think up to 1611. But all the Bibles published after, they separated the apocryphal books from there. There's hundreds of books that's been left out of the Bible. And there are some churches, some, some denominations, some sects that still uses uh, Bibles containing over 80 books or even more. So I say unto you then, how do we think that these 66 books can contain the essence of the Most High? when we have a greater than the Bible that's within us. We'll get to that. <clears throat> um, Second Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. Um, this is a scripture that's often quoted when we try to talk about the infallibility and that's the word down below, in the infallibility of the word of Yah. I've heard the term and we've heard it in church all the time. The Bible is the inspired infallible word of Yah. Um, 
it's funny because when I read that scripture, um, the word is, and I highlighted it here for a reason. If you notice, it is italicized. It looks different from the other words. And if you read um, study and you read footnotes and how the translators uh, put words together, especially if there's missing elements and they, you know, they think that, okay, the, the sentence needs to flow in a certain way. They'll add or they'll take away words to try to make the sentence flow in a certain way. So the word is was added to the original text that was not in the original text. That's why it's, an, it's italicized. So when you take that phrase, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yah and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. It implies that everything that is called scripture is given by inspiration. All scripture is, the word is, is an active, that means it, it is, that's why there's a scripture, so nini na nini means that I am, that I am. It's he's saying he is. I, mean, I, I actually say I'm going to one day do a class on the isness of Yah, the isness of Yah. But anyway, he's saying that he is. He, so that means it, 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 it is a part. All scripture is. But take away the is, and it reads entirely different. That one little word. Because now if I take out the is, it reads all scripture given by inspiration. All scripture given by inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction. So that means then only the scriptures that was, was given by inspiration is good for profitable and uh, which profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction. You get what I'm saying, right? Just that one little word can change the entire meaning of that phrase. Revelation um, 22 and 18 addresses another point that we often make. So for I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, uh, Yah shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the, the word of this book, um, of this prophecy, Yah shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So going back to this word infallible, infallible, by definition, it's incapable of making mistakes or being wrong incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. Um, syn synonyms are unerring, 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 uh, unerring, error-free, unfailing, faultless, flawless, impeccable, impeccable. Anyone, and you, you don't even have to take my word for it, just Google conflicts in the Bible. Conflicts in the Bible. And you will see how many different, whether it's textual conflicts, uh, uh, errors in translation, there's a bunch of stuff, right? What am I saying? Throw the Bible away. And there's actually some people that say throw the Bible away. But the Bible still contains the word of Yah. But there's enough breadcrumbs, even though they've messed with it, they've distorted, they've taken, they've added. That scripture that I read about adding and subtracting, you see, it didn't say you could not do it. He said, if you did it, but how did the, how did we interpolate it? That you cannot do it. This is the infallible word of God and it cannot be changed and nobody can add to it and nobody can take away from it. That's not what the word said. It says, if they do that, these things are going to happen. Revelations, uh, Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, the most high speaks by revelation. At that time, Isaiah answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Yah of heaven, and earth, because thou has hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Reveal them unto babes. Um, the disciples, who did he choose as his disciples? In fact, there was a time when the Pharisees uh, were saying to themselves, it's like, aren't these guys, these ignorant fishermen, these, these, these unlearned men, how is it that they possess such wisdom? How is it that they possess such wisdom? See, many of us are intimidated by people with degrees. I have a doctor of divinity. I have a master's in biblical studies. I have, you know, 10 master's degrees and two doctor's degrees, and, and we're intimidated by that. See, the Most High hides things from the wise and prudent and reveals them to babes. So you can't interpret this thing through the intellect. 
The Bible says knowledge puffed up, puffeth up. Intellect is great. We need intellectuals because there's some people who are very smart and in and, and, and the theological community, intellect have to sometimes speak to intellects and our people need to study to show ourselves approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we do need intellectuals, but you don't have to be an intellectual for the most high to use you. There's a scripture, right? Um, that 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 um says he takes the simple things to confound the wise the simple things to confound the wise and so many of you will shy away from doing things because you think you don't have the pedigree and in fact some of you when you go it, it, you can be such a blessing to others but because they don't see you with the pedigree that means you're not qualified to bring them a word it's hard for sheep to teach shepherds anyway that's for another time um, and the disciples came and said unto him, why speaketh unto her? I'm sorry, I read it from Matthew 13, 10. Um, and the disciples came unto him and said, why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given to you, unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. It's not given to everybody to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There are certain people sometimes that the most high can, the mo, let me put it this way, the most high can give you more through revelation than he can through some of the most scholarly work. He can give you more through revelation. Um, and so there are secret things. The, the scripture we all we always call, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of, his, of the almighty. He has a secret, he has secret places. And in order to find those, it's a secret because not everybody can find it. Anyway, let me keep it moving. Matthew 16, 13 said, when Yesiah came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist who was just killed. Some say Elias and others, Jeremiah and one or one of the prophets. Why would they say that? That's once again, you'll hear me say this lessons for another time because there is so much things that we need to talk about. So much of the teachings of Eurocentric Christianity that has poisoned our minds, that there are certain things that we, we don't read with understanding. And so when revelations meet up with theology, we tend to go back to theology because it's, this is what's called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is where new information is introduced and because there is a conflict there, you revert back to what you already know because that's a place of comfort for you. Cognitive dissonance. I also say it's spiritual Stockholm syndrome. When we cling so much to what we've been taught that we won't even entertain that we might have been taught wrong things and go back and analyze and assess whether the things that we have been taught are true. You know, in the book of Paul, I, I think I, I think which 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 part which, what Bereans, where it says that they believe what Paul said, but they search the scriptures every day to find out if what Paul said was true, right? And so, um, you know, we have to change our mindset. We have to anyway. Um, but and um, a verse uh, uh, Matthew um, sixteen fifteen. That's where I was, uh, and he saith unto them. But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Mashiach, the son of the living Elimo. And Yesiah answered and said unto him, Blood, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. This was not revealed by flesh and blood. Revelation comes through the one that sent me, through the Spirit. He said unto him, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will bring, build my ecclesia, and the gates of hell, excuse me, shall not prevail against it. It wasn't Peter. That's why Peter is revered in, in Catholicism as being the rock, Peter the rock. But it wasn't the, Peter was not the rock. The rock was revelation. That was the rock. So upon revelations, I will build my church my ecclesia upon revelations. Um, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should not tell any man, tell no man that he was 
Jesus or Christ, Isaiah, the, the Mashiach, right? Yes, uh, some will say Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, that's a curious thing to say, but that's once again something to explore another time. But um, I go down to verse uh, John 14, 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I shall come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you shall be also. Tying that scripture to the one that he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. See, many of us, Yesiah is the door. The Bible said that he is the door that everyone has to enter through to find to come into the kingdom of his father, to come into the house of his father. He is the only door. If anybody else tried to get into another door, they are thieves and robbers. So Yesiah is, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the father but my me. So when we confess our, our the, the Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, you know the scripture, thou shalt be saved. So salvation comes through confessing that he, he is Lord Adonai. He came, he died for our sins. Um, we ask him for forgiveness, we confess him with our mouth, we're saved. That's it. That's just the foundation. That's just the key that get us into the door. But in his father's house, there are many mansions. In every house, there are many rooms. To every room, there is a door. To every door, there is a lock. And to every lock, there is a key. He said unto Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. When you have revelation knowledge, when you when the Most High is able to reveal things to you by his mind and send me, you have the keys, not just a key to one door, but you have keys. Many of you know that you have multiple keys on your key ring because you have different doors that you have to open. So he gives to you the keys of the kingdom. Many of us, we only opened that front door and we came into salvation and that's it. But others have keys and want to go into different rooms and go to different levels of spirituality. That's where he's trying to take us, to go to a higher plane of spirituality. <clears throat> Dreams and visions. My wife, she's a dreamer. And um, in Jamaica, we have a saying that, you know, when a person's dream are very prophetic or they, they come to pass very frequently, uh, we have a saying that dreams walk straight. Dreams walk straight. And that's that's my wife. She scares me with some of her dreams. Um, some things she dreams years ago that's not coming to pass. Um, but dreams are very, very spiritual. Um, there's a brother. Um, let me give him credit um, and, and shout out while I'm here by the name of Kephas. I tend to forget his last name, but Kephas, brother Kephas, he's um, he lives in the Netherlands and he did a, a, a series, I think, or a video on dreams and vision. It was uh, very, very powerful, very informative. So I'm giving him a shout out here that um, if you uh, get a chance, uh, go uh, go to YouTube and uh, Google his name. His name is Kephas, K-E-F-A-S, I believe is the spelling. And he did a, vi a video on dreams and visions. Very, very good. Um, but my wife, she sees whole dreamscapes when she dreams, you know, whole, uh, <clears throat> the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, She'll have you know dreams that she can follow and lay out. Me, I'm even though I dream that way. Sometimes I get you know the whole thing just like her, but sometimes I just get little flashes. But um, she has dreamscapes, what I call dreamscapes. I, I get flashes. This is right at that period before you're not quite sleeping, but not fully awake. In that twilight period, I get flashes and revelations. A lot of revelations that come to me at that point. Um, dreams and visions is very powerful because we straddle two dimensions, two planes of existence. We are carnal and we are spiritual. The problem with many of us is that because we interact with our world with, in the physical realm, with our senses, hearing, tasting, touching, seeing, smelling, all of those things. And so most of our lives, we are familiar with the things that we can physically touch. And so we spend a lot of our lives neglecting the spiritual part of us. There's a duality about us. In many, even, even ancient civilizations, they have the yin and the yang. It's all about duality. And so the, 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 the funny thing is that the spiritual realm is where is the dimension of power. 
And so if we truly want to have the power that Yesiah said we should have, we have to get into the spiritual realm. And so when we are sleeping, our bodies, our physical bodies are suppressed. And so we are not all the stimuli that we get when we are awake from what we see, what we hear, what we see, taste, touch, all of those stimulus are now suppressed when we are sleeping. And it allows that spiritual man to rise up. And that's why many of us are in tune. We feel the, the, when we get into that realm while we're in our sleep, we get revelations, revelations. And so watch this, watch this brother's video on dreams. It's, it's very good. Dreams are very prophetic that um, many of the dreams that you will get is of things to come, whether the, the, the immediate future, the mid or far future, but dreams are very prophetic. And then they're also emphatic or empathetic, empathetic, I should say, empathetic. An empath is someone who can sense how another person is feeling. And, um, you know, it is said that sometimes you can have a dream and, you know, somebody comes, appears in your dream and, and maybe they're in a, some kind of a distressed situation. And you said, you know what, man, the most high drop, you know, maybe dream this person. Let me call this person and see how they're doing. And when you call that person, it's like, you know, I, I don't know, I had this dream about you. And the person will say, oh, my God, yeah, I've been going through this and that and that and that and that. OK, so that's empath. You were able to feel what the other person is feeling, no matter how far away that they are. They are. <clears throat> they've also done studies with twins and said that sometimes one twin can be distanced away from the other one and can kind of feel how they are, um, what, what the other person is going through. Um, one of the ministries that I listen to, um, and I'm giving a shout out to Teo Ministry, um, but the Teo ministry uh, uh, brothers are twins, from what I understand. And so um, if that's true, um, I'd like to, I'm, I'm curious as to whether they've experienced that kind of a thing where one brother could be a distance away and is going through something and the other brother senses it. And, you know, so yes, that's just because we have a, a, a psychic connection. And I know sometimes we demonize everything, but there's a psychic connection between brothers like that. And even sometimes you don't have to be twins. There's psychic connections between siblings. And, you know, so anyway, that's, that's, um, that's just something to ponder. Um, he speaks by his creation, by his creation. Um, this brings me to another point. Um, in Christianity, we are taught that there's a 400 year period of silence between Malachi and Isaiah, whom the world called Jesus, that there's a 400 year period that the Most High did not speak. Once again, Eurocentric logic, Eurocentric Christianity, and many of us believe that. But let me um, read a couple of passages. Psalms 19 one says to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of Yah and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. So did the heavens disappear? Because it says that the heavens declare, which means it didn't say declared in the past or will declare in the future, but declares the present participle. So it's constantly declaring his glory and the firmament shows his handiwork. It says day unto day uttereth. That means that each day he speaks. Every time you see the sun comes up, the sun rises on the horizon, the most high is speaking. When you see the stars in the sky, the most high is speaking. When you hear the birds singing, when you hear uh, the wind, you see the wind blowing through the tree, the most high is speaking. So how was he silent for 400 years? My wife um, um, said that she was talking to the father one time and saying, Father, I need a word from you. I need to hear from you. Speak to me. And she said the revelation that he gave to her, he says, I'm speaking all the time. But are you listening? Are you hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth? The famous line from, um, what's his face in um, that movie? Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, so he's saying, I'm speaking every single day. I'm uttering speech. The days are uttering speech. Right. There's uh, verse three says there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So no matter in the, where in the world you go, you're still able to see the sky. You're still able to see, he, his, his creation is speaking to you. OK, um, there the, I, as, as a paramedic or what was a paramedic for years and teaching what I taught, you had to know the anatomy of the human body. The Bible said that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know that the, the smartest computer, you know, cannot uh, do the, 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 uh, the, 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 a child 
the brain of a child, and I know they're coming up with quantum computing, but it took them a long time to get to that place. But, but when you look at your body and the, the, the mechanisms of your body, how it works, right? It is, it is, it is marvelous. The, the, what they, the scientists will tell you that if the sun is a few degrees away, further away from the earth, we would freeze. And if it was a few degrees closer, we would burn up. But everything is perfect in its order and they have never ceased from the creation. This is another topic that one day maybe we'll tackle or some of you, the whole flat earth versus round earth theory. And, you know, um, I know that I have been from the time I was a child and from the time, you know, my grandparents, we get up and we see the same constellations in the sky. We see the same man on the moon. We see the same things that look like, and it's been that way for thousands of years, have not changed. But anyway, that's another discussion for another time. Um, so um, Isaiah 40, verse 26 says, lift up thine eyes on high. Behold, who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number, he calleth them by calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Do we really know who this Elimo that we serve is? The Bible said that he knows every star in the sky, he knows them all by name. He knows the weight of the water in every river, ocean, streams, lakes. He knows the weight of the water. He knows every grain of sand that is upon the beaches and within the deserts. He knows every single one individually. He knows each snowflakes, which is different in their crystalline structure. He knows and he understands every single one of them. He said that this, every hair on your head is numbered. Not a single hair falls from you that he does not see. Not a sparrow fall from the tree that he does not see. Because he's what? His essence, his, his presence, his glory, his power permeates all of his creation. So how is he silent for 400 years? Once again, we have to change our paradigm. We have to change our mindset. Matthew 16, verse one says, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came unto him, tempting him, desired that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, um, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. So even the heathens whom he called hypocrites, he said, you can look at the sky and read the signs. How is it that you can't read the times? So that means that the signs speak. The signs speak. There's even another scripture where it says that the, the heathen by nature who knew not the law, that they did the things of the law um, because it's, it's something within them. So the most high, how was is, well, how is he silent for 400 years? Romans 1, 18, 1 18 says, for the wrath of Yah is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of Yah is manifest in them for Yah has shown it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even as eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. <clears throat> Let me pause there for a second. I have highlighted in the invisible things and are clearly seen. Um, the, there's a term called oxymoron, oxymoron, for those who may not understand the definition of it. An oxymoron is two uh, things that are in direct opposition to each other, like bitter, sweet, uh, like the term parting is such sweet sorrow. Um, I wrote a song a while back called Silent Cry. These are oxymorons. And so in this Romans 120 it says for the invisible things, the things that cannot be seen, they're invisible to the naked eye, that they are clearly seen. How is, these are oxymorons. How are they clearly seen? Because it's being made, to, it's understood um, by, his, uh, by, by his creation. He said that it's understood by the things that are made. So when you look at the things that are made, you see his power everywhere. It's in a bird. I shared that video at the beginning of, with the emperor penguins. I see the power of the most high even in that. When a bird flies or a bird sing, I hear the power of the most high. I see his power in the clouds as they move across the sky. 
I see it. I love to fish. I, I have a boat. And I, when I'm out on the ocean and I, I, I see the beauty of the ocean and sometimes I, 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 I see the sun rising and setting and the moon rising and setting over. The beauty just, it speaks to you. So how is he silent? He speaks all the time. But are we listening? There is one God, one Elimo and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So his presence is above all. It's through, it's in all and it's through all. His essence is all throughout his creation. And when you learn that, you learn that his energy, his glory, his cambo <clears throat> is, is permeating all of his creation. And those who are able to, to understand and get to a higher level of spirituality, they're able to tap into that flow of his energy. That's why he can give us revelations because we tap into the flow of his energy. And this is not some new age stuff. You know, this is once again, cleansing our minds of Eurocentric Christianity and the things that they have taught us because they've taught us to just listen to what they tell us and not to think for ourselves. Angels, Malekis. And there came, uh, Genesis 19, 1, and there came uh, two angels to Sodom at, even, at evening and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground and he dreamed, oh, let me stop there. This is going into something else. But this is the story of, um, of, of Lot and that the, the Most High sent some um, uh, angels to warn um, what was going to happen. And so uh, we know that the angel, if you follow the story, man, um, manually or physically had to take them and bring them out of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah before it was destroyed. So he used angels to, uh, to speak to them and to reveal what was coming. Um, <clears throat> Genesis 28 and 12 said, and he dreamed and behold, the ladder set up on the earth and at the top of it, at the top of it reached to heaven, excuse me, and behold the angels of Yas ascending and descending on it. Um, I highlighted this because I wanted to um, once again give you food for thought, right? Where was Jacob when this was happening, when he had this vision of this ladder that was extending from the heavens to the earth and angels ascending and descending? What continent was he on? Um, there are gateways, there are doors that the, the Malakis enter and exit. And um, why do you think Paula White was calling from angels from Africa? Just food for thought. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. And Jacob, uh, verse thir uh, 32, 1, and, and Jacob went on his way and the angels of Yah met him. Um, and we, we know the story of him wrestling with the angels and that, that kind of thing. Uh, but I, wanna, I don't want to get off on a side path. Right? I want to keep try to keep focused, try to get this finished because um, I'm trying to be conscientious of the time. But there's so much here. Um, Psalms 91, verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Matthew 24, verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. See, if you're not conscientious of hearing the voice of the Most High, when he sends his malakis to gather his elect, are you going to be hearing their call? Um, Hebrews 2, verse 2. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received the just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by Yah and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? So the word spoken by angels, if they were not received, there was a, a, a the, the people who didn't receive it received a just recompense. So there again, the Most High uses angels. And in the end of the time, he's going to also use them in a mighty way. Revelations 8, 2 says, And I saw seven angels which stood before Yah, and to them were given seven trumpets. Verse uh, 6 says, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So the Most High is going to use, because as these angels sound, it's when the various seals were opened and the various things come upon the earth. Personal story. Um, for those of you who live in the South Florida area, um, you all are familiar with the Dade County Youth Fair. And it is a, a pretty big fair that come that used to come around. I don't know. I don't live in Dade County anymore, <clears throat> but it used to come around every year. And when my children were small, um, we took them on a trip to the youth fair. Um, we had several of the younger ones and several of the older ones with us. 
So because, you know, um, the younger ones wanted to do some some things, the older ones wanted to do different things. I said to my wife, OK, let's split up. I'll take the, the older guys with me and then you take the younger ones and then we'll go so that everybody have a good time. So when I came back, my wife was, you know, basically just you, I can see she was frazzled and, you know, I said, what's going on, you know, and she told me the story that while she was there with the younger ones, my youngest son, um, I forget how old he was, but he somehow wandered off. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with kids, you get distracted. And I've seen it happen so much that we're in a second, these kids can wander off and get in trouble. I can't tell you how many tragic drownings I've had with children where because of distractions, parents, one parent thought that the other parent had it, the other parent thought that the next minute they find the child at the bottom of the pool because they were distracted. And so anyway, my youngest son disappeared. My wife turned around looking for him. He's not nowhere to be found. So she had the other kids with her and she didn't want to go dragging them, try to look. So she said, she prayed, she says, father, I am not moving from this spot. Bring my son back to me. I'm waiting right here for him. And she said she looked in the distance and here was a woman coming <clears throat> with my son in tow, holding his hand, looking straight at my wife and bought him and put his hand in her hand. And so while she's like, you know, why did you walk away? And she's chiding him. And she turned around to thank the woman, she was gone. She didn't say, see which way the woman went. And so I'm saying that, that I believe that was a Maliki that brought my son back to her. See, the angels can appear in any form that they choose. You know, people say they're shapeshifters. And once again, ooh, shapeshifters, you're getting into some crazy stuff. But the Malikis can appear, the Bible says, be not afraid to entertain angels or strangers because thereby we entertain angels unaware. So um, anyway, angels, um, he speaks through angels. Uh, now, people, people, the Bible said in the last days, knowledge shall increase, and it has increased because of the World Wide Web and the Internet. Um, my awaken, awakening was influenced by, um, and I've given a shout out here to uh, Watchman and his wife, Deborah, because it was their video uh, awakened, um, I'm sorry, not awakened, but uh, whited out. Um, I think it was the first one, the true Israelites were Negroes. My sister-in-law shared that video with me on, on WhatsApp. And I remember um, I had seen it, but I, you know, the title of it, but I didn't really you know, uh, watch it until one particular day. It was just like an impression you need to watch this. And so I watched the video. And after watching the video, um, you know, some say there are five stages of grief. Some say there are seven stages of grief. Well, however many, I went through all the stages of grief. First, it was like, nah, this can't be. Could this be true? And the more I thought about it, and then the more I thought about the curses of Deuteronomy 28, it was like that Pauline experience where the scales fell off of his eyes. And first, I was like, nah. And then I'm like, oh my God. And now everything just started to make sense. And I began to weep. And when I told you I began to boo hoo, listen, I'm no punk, okay? But I boo hooed. I, I'm talking about snot coming out. I boo hooed and I. I prayed and asked the Most High to forgive my, our ancestors. I was angry at our ancestors and how could they do this and condemn us to this hell that we're in. And I mean, I just, I went through all the stages of grief. And so I think, you know, it's the use of the internet that helped to facilitate my awakening as many of you out there. You know, and, and we, we most of the time when I listen to different people, our stories are, are very similar. You know, people like um, that's contributed to our awakening, such as uh, Stephen Darby, um, you know, may the most high rest his soul, who passed away a few years ago. Um, people such as Omar Thibodeau and Teal Ministry and Dante Fortson and Ron Dalton Jr. And, you know, um, I'm giving people the credit because they've been a part of my growth experience. See, as a person who was a teacher, I found out that the, 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 it's hard to teach teachers, but the best teachers are good students, right? And so you learn from everybody. You don't necessarily have to agree with all of them. I've learned some things from the brothers on the continent, 
Jonathan Chilombo and Masia Kadima, and I've learned from the Issachar couple. I've learned uh, uh, even some things from Big Judah. Uh, 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 um, I've just never really been able to get into the camp. I'm not going to lie to you. I've, I've not watched much of the camp stuff. I just couldn't get into that because my spirit, certain things that was going on, I couldn't, my spirit didn't take to it. But my point is that social media has become a blessing and a curse. The internet is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because knowledge has now increased and anybody can Google and can, you know, do searches, research, find old articles, old, old books, old, you can find so much information on the internet if you're willing to look for it. But it's also a curse because anybody with a, with a smart device can put out videos and, 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 and who checks them. That's why your spirit, you have to have the Mwanda and Semi to help you filter through what is good and what is not, what is true and what is false. Because there's a lot of stuff out there that's just pure nonsense. And, 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 and because of the spirit of the Mwanda and Semi, you learn that when you hear things, if it's not for you, the spirit will reject it like your body. If you eat some food that's bad, your body rejects it. That's why you have to be vomiting and diarrhea because your body's trying to purge that thing out of you. And so in the spirit realm, when something is not right, your body, your spirit rejects it. And so there are things that I've heard, videos I've watched that like right in the, right in the, in the, in the round container, okay? But there's other things that I like, mm, I don't understand that, but right away my spirit don't reject it. And so later I'll put it on the shelf and I'll pray about it. And later on, if it's meant for me, when the time is right, the most how will give me the revelation. And one of these days I'm gonna share my whole testimony with you all and you know show you why that's significant to me by not rejecting things outright. Um, through messages, through teachings, through videos, we all use these, uh, these mechanisms to learn and to grow. And so, um, people have been a major influence in this path. Um, his Ruach, um, by his spirit, Jeremiah 5.10 says, declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah saying, hear this, O foolish people and uh, without understanding, which have eyes and see not, ears and hear not. That means that there are people out there that have, you can see things with the physical eyes and with the physical ears that only pertains to this realm. But in the spiritual realm, we're, we, we have eyes and we're not seeing. We have ears that are not hearing because we're looking, we're, we're focused too much on the carnal and we need to focus in on the spiritual. Joel 3, <clears throat> sorry, Joel 2, 28, a well-known scripture, and it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out, um, uh, pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out of my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Um, why was it necessary for this outpouring in the last days? Libation is what I see it as a libation of the Moanda and Semi, the Holy Spirit. And then when he says all flesh, that means it's available to all flesh, right? But one of the things that, it, it, who determines who gets what is what you're able to draw into you. See, you can draw into you the, 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 the anointing. That's why the Bible said he gives unto people several gifts according to their abilities. The woman with the issue of blood, we all know the story well. She drew the virtue out of Isaiah. He didn't in fact, he asked the question, who touched me? Who touched me? Because the touch that, she, that he received wasn't a, just, just a physical touch. He said virtue left him. She pulled out of him that virtue. See, when you, when you learn who he is and you learn that his energy, his flow, his anointing is permeating all of his creation, and especially in these last days, why was it necessary? Because the veil between the two worlds had gotten very thin. The, the earth itself is a living, breathing organism. And the Bible talks about there's a time when the, the, the earth itself, that there's certain spirits that are trapped in the earth, right? If you read the book of Enoch, it talks about the fallen ones, which was chained into, into the earth. And so as the veil gets thin, that was held back the forces of darkness. Now it's starting to be permeated and, and there's more movement. There's more demonic activity. We just went through something where the Capitol building was attacked by a bunch of folks. When you look into the faces and into the eyes of these people, you can't see the satanic, the demons that was driving these people, like the demons that drove that herd of pigs into the water after he was cast out of that man in the tombs of the Gadarenes uh, or whatever it was pronounced, right? That's what I saw in that crowd. It was a spirit driving these people. 
And in fact, there's some people that afterwards are like, I don't know why I did what I did. Because they were being driven by these malevolent spirits. And so as these spiritual forces have in, has been amped up in the last days, the Most High had to counter by amping up his presence, his spirit in the last days. Let him that has an ear hear. Um, verse, uh, John chapter 14, verse 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter and that he may abide with you forever. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, but uh, once again, he's a teacher. And I know we love to hear other people teach. I do too. But the greatest teacher is the one that is inside of you. Learn to hear his voice. And he will give you revelations that even those, because we all get revelations of different things, but it will all tie back together with his word in some form or another. He will always confirm his word to you. Um, when I was putting this lesson together, just a, a brief side note, right? Um, when the Most High told me it's time to get off the sidelines and I was thinking, well, you know, I mean, I've had so many revelations, so many things I wanted to talk about. And so I was asking, well, what should I speak about? What should I share? And when he gave me this revelation, my sheep hears my voice. Then later on, I heard when a whisper becomes a shout. And so I said, okay, well, I started putting this together. I started finding my scriptures and, you know, putting it all together. And um, I didn't get a chance to do it over the weekend because I had my grandchildren over. And so I said I would do it on Monday. And so, um, you know, when I came back, we had to go go run some chores. And when I came back, um, I said, okay, well, let me just look and see if there's any new videos up or whatever that I haven't seen. And um, when I looked, I saw that Watchman and his wife had just put a video up. And the title of the video was, I think, um, are you hearing his voice or something like that? Are you hearing his voice? And I'm like, wow, that's confirmation. I called my wife, I said, look, and she says, yep, that's confirmation. But then later on, she went walking. This is about five something, five, six o'clock. She went walking by herself because I was tired. I had a bad headache. And so I was laying. And so when she came back, she had a conversation with her sister who was in Miami. And her sister had, you know, said, you know, because the ladies, they have prayer groups and sometimes they ask different ladies to speak or to, to give a word of exhortation. And so she, um, she had done it a few weeks back. And so she said, you know, talking to, to my wife, she said, if they ever ask me to do this again, you know, I know exactly what I'm going to speak on. And my, my wife said, well, what, what are you going to speak on? She said, hearing the voice of God, hearing the voice of God. Now, you know, we can say these things are just coincidences, right? Um, I can't tell you how many times that we'll be talking, my wife and I, we'll be walking and we're talking. And the very same thing that we were talking about, I'll come back home and somebody has it on, you know, we'll talk about the same thing on a video. And I'm talking about we've not had this conversation about this subject in a long time. And on the specific day that we had that conversation, uh, see a video or see something on TV, that's exactly the same, same thing that the Most High speaks. You cannot put him into a box. He speaks in several different ways. Anyway, let me move along because this is getting a little lengthy and I was saying I was going to try to keep it short. Um, uh, verse, where did I stop at? Um, Okay, reveal John 15, verse 26. When the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. How be it when, verse 13, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whomsoever he shall, whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You see, this is the era of the Holy Spirit, the Mohan ben Sami. Isaiah said, I had to go back to my father, for if I don't go, the comforter will not come. Remember, I talked about this being a tag team, right? And this may be just not, you know, a, a crazy way of putting it, but that's just how I, I, I just think crazy ways sometimes. And so he said, I have to go to my father so that I can send the comforter. He said, all power is given unto me. 
And so now that power I'm sending down to you by way of my of the Holy Spirit. So anyway, um, verse John 16, verse 14 said, He shall glorify me, for he shall not receive, for he shall receive of mine and show unto you all things that the Father. Did I read that already? Um, all things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said, said I that he shall take of mine and will show to you. First Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which Yah has prepared for them that love him. But Yah has revealed them unto us by his mind and sent me by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, all things, yea, the deep things of Yah. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him, even so the things of Yah knoweth no man, but the spirit which is in us, right? So um, <clears throat> Brother Yonatan, um, he did a teaching on this also. And once again, if you have a chance and if you follow his channels, I know there's been some conflicts going on back and forth. And anyway, um, but he did a teaching on that. And that was, that was a, um, a edifying teaching about uh, I have not seen or ear heard, but see the things that are not seen by the physical or the physical eye or ear is revealed to us by his Moandan Semi. And so we have that revelation knowledge once again. He speaks through revelations. Um, 1 Corinthians uh, 2.12, uh, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is in Yah, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us, which things are all we also speak, not in the words which man, of man's not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. I jumped over a point earlier um, where it says, who knows the spirit of a man, but the, who knows a man more than the spirit that is in him? So who knows you more than you do, right? You know yourself more than your, than, than your wife do, right? So who knows you more than your spirit? So who knows the father more than the Moan and Semi, which is from him? So what he's trying to say to you is our search as a people is to learn more of him. We sing songs more and more about him, more we want to learn, we pray we want to learn more of you. He sent us his spirit that knows the deep things of him. And so it is our job to make sure that we do everything to create the environment within us that the Mwandan Semi can abide because he will not stay in a dirty vessel. This is one of the things that you know, which many people in religion think that the, you can just do any old thing and live any old way and that the spirit of the Most High is going to stay and abide in you. You are the temple. So you're not going to just go out there and do any old thing, live any old way and expect the Most High who is righteous and holy to dwell in you. There's a scripture that says that holiness without which no man shall see Yah. Holiness. How can we who said that we have been saved and cleansed from sin and who have the Holy Spirit in us live a life of sin? There is a disconnect there. Okay. Anyway, that's kind of going off on a rant there. Um, uh, where am I? Um, so, um, uh, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yah, for the foolish, their foolishness unto him, neither can he uh, receive them. This I'm reading 1 Corinthians 2, 14, because they are spiritually discerned. Spirit speaketh of spiritual things, comparing spiritual things unto spiritual things. We, If we're going to ever achieve that level of power that the Most High has appointed for us, we have to get to the place where spirit is speaking to spirit. We got to come out of the carnal mindset. I think uh, we're almost done. I have a couple more slides, I think. Spiritual maturity, Hebrews 5, verse 12 says, for when, the, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one should teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Yah and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. See, when you're a baby, you need milk, but meat is what we should be chewing as adults. And yet many of us are still having to drink the milk from the breast. You know, um, if you are a woman and you've had to breastfeed your child, there comes a point where you gotta sit tell, you gotta wean that child off the breast. When they develop teeth, I think that's a good sign. It's time to, 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 to wean them off the breast. 
but some of us have full rows of teeth and it's, you know, how sad it is to see a purse, a child with a full row of teeth still sucking on the breast. And that's many of us. We're like that little bird that's still waiting there with our mouth open, waiting for somebody to drop food into our mouth. The time has come when we should be teachers, but yet we have still, we still need to be taught. He told the disciples to go and make disciples of all men as a teacher. Your goal should be to educate the student and make sure learning takes place. How do you know that learning has takes place, taking place is when that, teach, that student now has absorbed, have, have received enough information to now they can become teachers. And you can sit back and, and, and just be proud of the accomplishment because you've now passed on knowledge onto that person and have replicated yourself in that person. First Corinthians 3 and 1 says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For yet, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? Are you not carnal as walk as men? Whenever you see envying and strife and divisions, it's carnality. It's carnality. One of the things, and like I said, I've watched like many of you and I've seen what's been happening in the community. And even before, you know, it's always been division among our people. You know, I came up here from Jamaica when I was eight years old and I had a hard time in school, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I was teased because I had a very strong accent. I was country. And so, you know, the way how we pronounce words, the, the, the American kids, including my own black brothers and sisters, used to laugh me to scorn. They used to call me coconut, tell me I came off the, 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 the banana boat, you know, because in Jamaica, certain words like here in America, you will say iron, but we would say iron. Or we would say, well, you say X, Y, Z, we would say X, Y, Z. And just those little differences will cause the students to laugh at me and, you know, and, and, and I would fight. I used to be a fighter, man. I, I developed a temper. I, you know, I would fight you in a minute. Because, you know, um, I'm not a very tall person. So people say I have the short man. So I'm 5'8", but still, I'm, I, I was a fighter, okay? But, you know, what I, what, what I realize is that where there's fighting and division, man, that it's chaos. The Bible said that we, are, we should not be ignorant of the devil's devices, but we are ignorant of his devices. Because he comes in and he stirs up the division amongst. He have the Jamaicans hating the Americans, the Americans hating the Haitians, the Haitians hating the, and then we have all of us hating the Africans. And, you know, it's a big mess. And now we, we say we are awakening to the truth of who we are. We say we know that the two sticks are going to come together, but yet still there's divisions among us. We have the camps fighting against the, 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 the Messianic Hebrews. And then we have the, the urban apologetics fighting against, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, and then we, we the Christianity is fighting. And, and it's, it's like one big, you know, um, they, 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 they're this thing. I don't watch wrestling anymore, but now they, they, they used to have these brawls in the ring when you're watching wrestling, all fake stuff. But, you know, you have these brawls where everybody jumps in the ring and everybody's just brawling. And that's what I see happening amongst our community, brawling. And yes, I know how, you know, listen, many of us don't, 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 don't get on the internet because, you know, we're exposing ourselves to criticism and people will get in your chat and say all kinds of things. You have to develop a thick skin and let this, the water fall off your back like a, a water off of a duck. Because if you're thin skinned, this is not the place for you. The enemy is going to attack you. People who don't want to hear the truth is going to attack you. Family members who don't want to receive this truth. There's a scripture that says, don't cast your pearls before swines because then they're gonna trample it underfoot and then turn around and attack you. Well, when people aren't ready to receive the word, they stomp all over it and then they'll turn around and attack you, right? And so, you know, you gotta be prepared for that. You know, you, uh, listen, the stage is where I am. I'm not, I, don't, I don't have time to debate with people. Our people are sick. We're, 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 we're sick people, they broke us. And so, you know, I'm, I'm 62 years old. I'm not gonna spend the rest of my time, more of my life is behind me than is ahead of me. I'm not going to spend my time wrestling with people, whether it's a comment against, you know, listen, I don't have time for that. Our people are dying. And so, you know, um, we got to be smarter than this. But, you know, I don't know what it's going to take. There again, I believe it's the, the, the most high said he's going to change our hearts. And it's sad it's going to take a heart, a change in our people's hearts before we can stop start realizing that we are brothers, that we've, we've all been bitten by the same snake as it's sometimes put, Right. And we're all trying to find our way. None of us have the whole truth. You know, we learn from each other. I get a little bit from here. I don't agree with everybody whose names I've called. I don't agree with all of their teachings. 
But as it's often said, take the meat and spit out the bones. But that don't mean that because I don't agree with you, I'm going to, you know, just, just, just go on and eviscerate you. You know, I, 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 listen, we got we to gotta be smarter than that. But anyway, um, uh, verse, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 4 says, while, while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? When one say, I'm of this camp, and I'm of that camp. I follow this person, and I follow that person. And, you know, it says, who then is Paul, or who is Apollos? But ministers. You know, I've given them the abilities. It is me. He says, Paul will water, plant, and Apollos will water, but it is me that gives the increase. So who should you be following? The one who plants, or the one who follow, or, or waters, or the one who gives the increase? We're, we, we're, we're smart enough. We got we, we, we to do better than this. Um, 1 John 2, 26, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. That means it stays in you. It is there all the time in you. And you need not that any man should teach you, but that's, that as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Part of my problem that I have with our, and I love, trust me, I love my people, whether they're in Christianity or Islam or whatever religion that they find themselves in, worshiping by Deuteronomy 2864. I won't talk about that now because I'm trying not to offend too many people. But the reality is that the spirit, the Bible said, when he, the spirit of truth is come. The Bible said that in the last days, they that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth. Two things. They're, they're twins. One does not exist without the other. You cannot have the spirit and, have, and not have truth. And you cannot have truth and not have the spirit. They both work simultaneously. So for those who are saying, well, I know that we are the people, but there is no but. If we are the people, we have to speak that we are the people. We have to teach our congregations that we are the people. Well, you know, people are going to leave the church. See, that's the part of the problem that we have today is we built our entire theology, our entire paradigm, our entire uh, 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 even assemblies based upon a Eurocentric model of Christianity, of serving the Most High. We were a spiritual people. We were to be the light to the Gentiles. It's sad because in the scripture, there's two scriptures and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm almost done. There's a scripture that's when, when Isaiah spoke with the woman who said her daughter was sick and he said, you know, it is not me for me to take the children's meat and give to the dogs. Or to, and she said, but even the dog eat the crumbs that fall from the other table. I'm a master's table. I'm not trying to call anybody dog, but there's a principle here that his people was not meant to eat crumbs. The crumbs was for the other nations, but we now are eating the crumbs and the other nations is feasting at the table. Let that sink in. There's another scripture that says, I, it, it is a strange things to see Slaves on horseback and princes on foot. Let that sink in. Okay. The church has come up with this replacement theology that we're all Israel now and it all should be about salvation. But the Bible said that it, it is about the entire thing. It's like we got to eat the whole scroll. You can't just eat bits and pieces of it. The whole thing is interconnected. You cannot have one part without the other. It's all interconnected. But they taught us not to even look at the Old Testament. Just read the New Testament. Just talk about grace. And that's the extent of it. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm ranting again. Um, let me, um, light versus darkness. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Isaiah. Now, if any man build upon the foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, but the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what is what sort it is. See, Isaiah is the foundation. And many of us, we just settle at that foundation. But what he's done is he gives it up into us to develop on that foundation what he's laid. We choose our building material. So you're going to use gold, silver, or precious stones. Those three materials are purified and made more refined by fire. Wood, hay, and stubble, those things are burnt up by fire. And so many of us, we're going to come in just on foundation. That's fine. You, you know, you, you have salvation. You can come into the door, come to the table. But many of your works are going to burn up, burn up because you use the wrong material to build.
Anyway, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, but what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, what communion has light with darkness, what concord has Christ with Belial, or what part hath he with that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement hath the temple of Yah with idols? For ye are a temple of, you are the temple of the living Elimo, and Elim, and, and Yah hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elimo, and they shall be my people. See, we are... We try to appropriate things um, and 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 add them to our faith. That's what that's what the Catholic Church did with Hellenization. Hellenization. They took and they in, they incorporated the pagan practices of the Hellenists into the practices of Christianity and gave us this one thing with all of it blended in. The best way to poison somebody is, is not to make the poison so strong that they can detect it, but you, you put small amounts that poisons their minds or poison them over time. And this is what has happened to us as a people. We say, yeah, I know, you know, he wasn't born on Christmas, but because it's the season and everybody is, you know, in the season, I'm going to, but the Bible said, love not the world, nor the things that are in the world, that you are different from the world. So how are we going to follow after the world and say that and compare him? Listen. When the disciples tried to, to, to even compare Yesaya with the, with 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 the um, with Elijah and Moses, when they said, "Let us build three temples," he's like, "The Most High had to check him," and said, "No, no, no, no. This is my son. You don't put him in the same the same level. Even though these prophets were great men, but this is my son. He's not on the same level." So my point is that we think that we can appropriate these things and put a Christian veneer on it, and it's supposed to be acceptable unto the Most High. Things don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. We don't tell him what he accepts. He tells us what he accepts. Once again, it's us trying to create him in our own image. Anyway, um, this is the message. Um, verse John uh, 1, 5 said, this, is, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you unto you that Yah is light and in him there is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Isaiah, his son, Isaiah Hamashik, uh, Yeshua Hamashiach, as some says, um, his son cleanses us from all sin. So there is no fellowship between light and darkness. You cannot be hot and cold, bitter, sweet. You, you have to be one or the other. And so I say that a true indicator that something is not of the most high is when the rest of the world is doing it, then we should be going in the other direction. Easter, Ishtar, we all know these things. You know, it's like taking up, a, 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 anyway, I, I won't go there. But anyway, light and darkness, there is no fellowship. So in conclusion, Matthew 24, verse 3 said, and as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? And Yesiah answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. The first thing he said, don't let anybody deceive you. Take heed. Verse 5 uh, says, for many shall come in my name and say, I am, I am the Christ, I am Christ and shall deceive many. See, when you come in someone's name, you come in their authority. When my wife signs my name, she's saying that I have the authority of my husband because I bear his name. And so when someone comes to you and said that I come in the authority, I represent, they're not saying that they are, they are the Messiah, but they're saying that I come in his authority, I'm his vicar, I'm his representative on the earth. Isn't that what the Catholic Church did with the popes and say, he is the vicar of, 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 of Messiah, of Christ? And that you can't come to Christ, but unless you come through the papacy, right? And there are many of us as people who we think we can't come to the most high unless we go through the pastor, we go through the bishop, we go through this person. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 24, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The word for false is pseudo, pseudo Christos and pseudo prophetos, I think it is in Greek. Pseudo means artificial, false, made up, right? My wife had another one of her dreams and she was going through an assembly and she had one of those watering pitchers, right? And there were some plants, the people were represented as plants. 
And as she went to water each plant, there was a Malachi that was with her. And the Malachi would say to her, no, not that one. That one is artificial. And then she went to water another one. He said, no, not that one either. That one is artificial. Then she went to another one. He said, yes, that one is true. The problem with, 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 with what's happening today is those who are artificial and those who, sometimes you look at an artificial plant and you can't tell the difference until you actually go up and touch it. And sometimes even when you touch it, you have to say, man, is this really fake? And this is the same way, the wheat and the tears growing together until the day of harvest. But, you know, um, the Bible said that they, these people are going to do many signs and wonders, miraculous things. You got people over there faking miracles, doing things that everybody bowing down and oh my God, and they are deceiving a lot of people. But when you have the Moanda and Semi inside, that is what, what, when it says, if it were possible, that means that if you don't have the spirit inside of you, you can be deceived too. But it's the spirit that gives you the revelation when somebody is operating in another spirit. Anyway, um, religion. Um, the Most High showed me that modern day religions are towers of Babel. Towers of Babel. What was the purpose of the Tower of Babel? They were trying to build and ascend up to the heavens. And even so, modern day religions are man's way of trying to reach up to the most high. Spirituality is the most high's way of reaching down to man. There are over 4,200 religious sects and over 334,000 Christian denominations, over 50, about 50 versions of the English Bible. Why all of this? Babel, confusion. And from religion to religion, you're going to find differences. So there's confusion. In some religion, Jehovah's Witnesses will say that if you don't believe this way, you can't go to heaven. Seventh-day Adventists say if you don't believe this way, you cannot go to heaven. The, you know, Episcopalians, and it's, it's all babble, confusion. The Bible says that the Most High is not the author of confusion. Okay. Um, idols of the mind. Idols of the mind. We are a country that are people that are quick to idolize people. I saw um, today, or I actually saw it the other day, but at the CPAC convention, which is a conservative Christian, quote unquote, conservative Christian evangelical, mostly white evangelical gathering. And they built an effigy, effigy of Donald Trump, a golden image of Donald Trump. And they had people there taking pictures with it and just, you know, all kind of selfies with it and all kind of craziness. Idols of the mind. We idolize people. We even have programs called the American Idols. We idolize athletes. We idolize pastors. We even idolize the Bible. The Bible was given to us as a frame of reference. And the, I shouldn't even say that, the scriptures was given to us as a frame of reference. I said sometimes we use the scriptures and the Bible interchangeable. Two different things. The Bible was compiled hundreds of about a hundred and something years after the death of the last disciple. So this, and then as they, as these councils and these translators got around and began to translate the Bible, they would take out ad and do whatever they, they was, they, they wanted to do. And, you know, what gave them the right to take books out of the Bible? Give me everything. Let my spirit tell me what I will receive and what I will not receive. But by you excluding that from me, and then you pretend that these, you, you, you say, well, they were available because we tucked them away in the Apocrypha. Well, the Apocrypha was available in, the, in prior to 1611. So why did you take it out? Well, we don't consider it, they're, they're deuterocan deuterocanonical, whatever term that they use, um, to say that it, it didn't belong in the canon. Who made you that authority? Who gave you that authority? When Paul told Timothy that all scripture, <laughs> anyway, um reformat um i'm almost done um when it comes to uh, uh computers i built computers in the past and those who are computer uh who knows computers know that sometimes when you first buy a computer it's just zipping along you know um boots up really fast programs run really fast and then you connect to the internet you start downloading applications and files and all these other kind of things and after a while, your computer starts slowing down. So now you have to sit and wait and you have all kinds of conflicts and crashes and all kinds of craziness going on with your computer. And there are programs you can buy that will help to clean out the computer. But sometimes you get to the point where you just got to reformat the hard drive, got to wipe everything clean. And the danger without, there's something called a partial format where you wipe the hard drive clean, you reinstall the operating system, but you keep all your files. 
The problem is those, those, those viruses, those cookies, those worms, they're attached to the files. So when you put the files back in, here comes the virus again. This is, how, this is what is happening with the awakening. Sometimes we need to purge our mind, purge our thought, purge our, 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 our paradigm of all that we've been poisoned with and start with a clean, fresh slate. Go back over the scriptures for yourself now with, with different eyes. Because to, 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 to hold on to pieces of, that, of the files from before, those who have an ear will understand what I'm saying, that the viral infection will just come right back again. Um, removing the ancient landmarks. In the olden days, the way how properties would be marked, property lines would be marked is by placing stones or some kind of a landmark to say, this is where my property ends and yours begin. But sometimes those scrupulous people would take and move those landmarks. And if you don't rec recognize the layout of the landscape, you will miss it. And the Bible said, cursed are those who do that. It's not everything old that's bad and it's not everything new that's good. Sometimes we have to go back to the old landmarks. Um, there's a scripture that says um, in Jeremiah 1.10, see, I have set this day, set thee this day over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Sometimes you got to do this destruction. You have to tear it down first before you can build it back up. So my final thoughts on Proverbs 3 and verse 5 said, trust in Yah with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. A man hath, um, Proverbs uh, 15, uh, well, the reason why I have that there is in these last days, things are going to happen that's going to really cause us distress. Um, we've got a pandemic that's running rampant and people are so afraid that we're running and taking this as it's sometimes referred to as the jab. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And as a person, once again, who uh, knows um, the human anatomy and knows um, what they have done to synthesize this, this back, um, that they use messenger RNA and uh, lipid uh, uh, nanoparticles or lipid, um, yes, lipid nanoparticles to enter into the cell so their messenger RNA can do its work. And they tell you, oh, trust us. It's not going to modify your DNA in any way. Trust us. These are the same people that said, trust us during the Tuskegee experiment. These are the same people that said, trust us when they, when they, when they were uh, cutting out our women's wombs, sterilizing our women. But yet we want to run and go and take this thing that they, they promise is tr that we should trust them with that they synthesize within a year when normal things take time to come to, 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 to go through their clinical trials and find out, you know, through a test group of people, there's a process before something comes to the market. But because they've infused so much fear that we, the, the Bible says that he has not given a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So anyway, I don't want to dwell on that too long. Uh, people do what they want to, but we, those who trust in Yah, he said that he will direct your path. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth and the word spoken in due season, how good it is. And some of us, you know, the most high shut me down because it wasn't my season. Some of you, it is now your season. And he's trying to encourage you to get off the sidelines. The, uh, Isaiah 50 verse 4 said, Yah hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning, he wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. See, he's given us intellect. Some of us, he's taught us how to do research. You know, he needs every member, all hands on deck. He needs the one that is highly intellectual and he needs the one that is illiterate, who, he's, who through his spirit he can speak to and give wisdom that even the intellectual one may not possess. Um, and unto one he gave, um, I'll finish up Matthew 25, verse 15, unto, unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his, to, to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And he that would receive the five traded with the same and made um, them other five. Likewise, he that received the two, he also gained other two. But he that received the one went and digged it in the earth and hid Yah, the Lord's money. And so take, therefore, the talent from him and give it unto him, which have 10 talents. And I think later on it says, to whom much is given, much is required. Every one of us has been given a talent. Every one of us has something that we can do. Some may have one, some may have two, some may have five. 
It is not your job to worry about the one with the two or the one with the five. Whatever you've been given, that's what you've been given to use for his glory. The one that was, the, the, the sad part is the one with the one, the least talented one, took that talent and, 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 and buried it in the ground. And that which you had, he had was taken away from him. The Most High will raise up other people to take your talent if you don't fulfill your role. Many of you have been sitting on the sideline just waiting for somebody else to do it, somebody else to teach, somebody else to, to come out with stuff because you don't want to put yourself out there. And I get it. It's, it's, it's a scary thing, especially those who are introverted. I was not an extroverted person. I'm a person that would much rather just sit and chill and listen and learn. But see, he doesn't give you these gifts so that you can sit on the sidelines. He wants to make disciples out of us to whom much is given, much is required. So you, if you want much, it's going to take much of you. You have to have courage, develop a thick skin. People are going to criticize you. Just get that through your head. It's like somebody trying to tell you you can lose weight without feeling hungry. It's just not, that's not the way, that's, that's, that's a ruse. Okay, so expect the criticisms to come. Expect people to talk about you, say things about you, try to dispute with what you're saying. But as long as you know that you are operating in the spirit of the Most High, yeah, there's only one person you need to please, and that's Him. So um, I want to thank you all. You know, I don't know who this was for. I don't know. I, I don't have tens of thousands of subscribers. You know, but if it reaches one person. If this message encourages one person, then I feel like my life is not in vain and my, my, my work is not in vain. I'm not doing this because I want subscribers. I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for likes. You know, if it's been a blessing, blessing to you and you think it can help somebody else, then please, you know, feel free to share, feel free to like. You know, as the Most High inspires me, I'll be doing more, you know. Um, but there again, you know, I thank all of the people whose name I've mentioned and some who I have not for their role in, in my spiritual growth. You know, I'm, I'm man enough to, 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 to be able to say that. I'm humble enough to be able to say that. And this is not false humility. I've learned a lot from many of you people out there. And I'm hoping that some people will learn some things from me. You know, each little spark adds to the flame and we're all, we'll all grow together. So once again, I thank you. I say salama. Um, I, I say uh, betuwabu. Um, and, and Matondo to all um, of you out there who took the time to listen. I know I went a little bit long, but, um, you know, I pray that um, this will be a blessing to you all. Um, peace out.